Hello, welcome to my floss tube. My name is Phoebe, and this is a YouTube channel about cross stitch. So I'm going to talk to you about all of the stitching that I've done in the last couple weeks. If this is your first interaction with floss tube, type floss tube in on YouTube and you will find a myriad of beautiful humans who enjoy the same craft that you do and welcome to it. When I found it a little over a year ago, my I feel like my crafty world just exploded. I was so excited to find people across the world that enjoy the same craft as I do. It was always a solitary sport slash hobby for me and now it's not alone. I still don't have any friends that live near me in person that I could stitch with but I'm also not really that great at making friends in person to be honest. Um, but I have all of you guys, so it makes me so, so happy. So welcome to my floss tube. This is episode number 28. I've been doing floss tube for a little over a year, and I've been stitching since I was about 12 or 13. I used to be a monogamous, basically dimensions gold kit stitcher, and oh, I meant to bring some down to share with you some of my previous finishes. I don't have anything framed um, because... I never would take the time to frame them. This um, craft is more about the process for me than the finish, but I have been beginning to finish projects into pillows, and that has been super, super fun for me. You know, actually, so I'm turning 40 in the next few months, and so I've been doing this craft for, what, 28 years, I'm saying? And um, a lot of those years, I have moved a lot of different places and I've never really lived at a spot that I thought I can go ahead and put a bunch of holes in these walls and it's gonna be fine but I finally do now so um, you know I can decide what I want to do with all of these walls in this house and so I'm gonna start framing some stuff and putting it up on the walls that's what I know as my friend Heidi likes to say. So, okay, welcome to this floss tube. It is going to include the first six days of my Stitch Mania. I am doing Stitch Mania in a pretty traditional format. I'm gonna have a different project for the first 23 days of this month. They're not all new starts. Most of them are projects that I started last year that are carrying over, but I do have a number of new starts, two in this first six days, and then I have a bunch of, um, last year's projects that weren't finished here in the middle and then we're gonna have a bunch of new starts at the end Woohoo! yeah so all right <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get into it i'm going to share with you my whips for the last two weeks that's my works in progress and then i do have some haul to share with you and i have some exciting um stuff that i've been working on you guys know that i like to dye my own fabric over dye it so i have been experimenting with something similar to that if you want to hear about it coming up toward the end of the video. Before I get into whips though, I wanna talk about a few channels that I've been watching lately. So the first one is Amy Love Toads. Now you're probably very familiar with this channel. I had heard her kind of mentioned here and there and always forgot to just look her up and subscribe. And when I finally did this last couple, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I love her channel because she stitches on stuff that I feel like nobody else is stitching on. And it, but it's still stuff that is very appealing in my opinion. And um, she's just really different and I find that really fun. So I think I watched her most recent one and then I went back to the very first one that she has still on her channel and I've been watching from there. So that is super fun. I also started watching Running With Scissors, Jane and Julie. And I think I, I didn't start with their most recent video. I just went right back to the beginning and I'm learning about heart anger and I never even knew what that was before. Whoa, that is an intensely beautiful, meticulous craft. It's amazing. So I have a lot to learn there. So I heard about their channel from Sarah Stitchy Spot. So thank you, Sarah, for recommending that to me. Another channel that's new to me, usually I just talk about channels that I've just recently found. And occasionally I'll mention a channel that's like one of my standards. But you guys know I have my favorite, like, you know, 50 channels that I watch religiously. But these are the ones that are new. So also new to me is Those Missing Stitches. She does amazing full coverage work. I believe she stitches full coverage and some other things, but whoa, she is able to just book it on her projects and just like I have um, 
I think it's the Grand Library from, it's an Amy Stewart piece from Heaven and Earth Designs, but I have like a little teeny tiny diagonal up in the corner and she has made huge progress on, I'm not, if it's that design or if it's a similar one, but it's very encouraging to me to see how beautiful it's going to look if I actually put some more time into that piece. So I definitely recommend. And then I also checked out a few videos from Tiny House Stitcher. I really love basically everything that she's working on. And um, sometimes she talks about her tiny house that she lives in, which is fun too. So I will link those channels that are new to me down in the description bar below. You will also find down there anything that I'm talking about. I will link to where you can go to shop for it or things like that um, so you're not left hanging. All right, so now that we have embraced fellow members of our community, let's go ahead and talk about whips. So I think I worked on three different projects. I drew two of them randomly with you last time, and then I drew one more after I was kind of done working on those. I don't stitch on any single project for a very long time because I just get kind of bored with it since I used to be a monogamous stitcher I'm not bored with it I'm just like excited for the next thing always in my life I'm like I have so many fun things that I could do like I just want to be bop around to all of them because I'm excited by everything so anyway I have three whips to share with you until we get into mania and then we're gonna look at those so I do have a lot to share with you because it's a lot of different projects so let's go ahead and get started my first whip after my last floss tube was Lavender Farm by Cori Ibatakori. And I will always put up on the screen what the project looks like in entirety so you can follow along with that. Oh, this is a good time as ever to show you my table of contents. So I came up with this this week because I'm always like flipping through here. I know generally, this is like my, um, my cross stitch journal. I have two of them. And so I have pages of each project and when I've worked on them and stuff like that. But I know generally like when I started stuff, but um, I made a table of contents so I could find it easier. So it's in alphabetical order. This book is all full. So this book will not have anything added to it. So I can look down here, find Lavender Farm. No, it's on page 12. And that helps me a lot when I'm um, going to write in it to say, you know, how many, you know, what day I stitched on it and things like that. So I can go to page 12 and find that the last time I worked on this was December 18th, 2022. So I need to add this time. My last floss tube was April 23rd and I believe I worked on it that day and the next day. So that's how my table of contents works. Once I filled out this notebook, then I started another one and so I know that anything that I've started like since the new year is in here. So it just has this many um, items, but I can continue and fill the whole thing out. So, and these are also alphabetical and they continue the number from the previous book and the pages get numbered as the projects start. So um, yeah, that's one extra little fun stitchy thing I did this week. So Lavender Farm, this also helps me because I put all of the details here so I remember what I stitched on and stuff. So this is 28 count Irish linen. I started on May 17th, 2022 and this is stitched two strands over two um, linen threads and this is not my favorite fabric. I really don't like this. This is super super loose. It doesn't feel very structured. It's just like floppy but you know you don't know these things until you try all the stuff that's why I tried all the stuff so anyway I got more of the structure in this time I put up on the screen where I was last time I don't believe I had any of this so yeah I got a fair bit of work done next up is my Chatelaine so the lavender farm is the one that I chose randomly with you last time from my mania 2022 whips and this is the one that I just chose from the rest of my whips so I have two random starts each video, not starts, whips each video, and then um, we go from there. So this is a Holland Mandala Chatelaine. It's on 18 count plain Ada. I'm using the called for silks, which I adore, and the beads and everything. I started this on January 1st. This was my new year, new start. 
of this year and the last time I worked on it was well I wrote the last time was January 9th that cannot be accurate but sometimes I don't always update this as I should um, so but that's okay I'm just going to put in here I'm pretty sure I worked on this sometime in February so I'm gonna put February and then um, we're just gonna make up a date here that's not very good um, accurate journaling right but that's okay I don't really care <laughs> so we're gonna put that I worked on this on April 25th because I worked on Cory Bata Cory for a few days and um, and this one I didn't work on that much. I added some more to here. And then, oh, I did do, I did do these specialty stitches here, along here. And these ones down here, I put in all these too. These were fun. So I like specialty stitches. I think they're super fun. Um, so, oh, I think I also did do um, these little stems of the tulips or the crocuses I'm not sure um, so yeah and then I started building out this and then I ordered a little bit more um, MPI and then I'm ready to put in some more when I draw this next this one I am making nice and puffy this is two strands of silk over the one strand of the Ada. So you could potentially just do one strand on 18 count Ada, but I did two. It's going to be really nice and full looking. So because I decided not to stitch on my shadow lane that long, I did one more random spin of the wheel and I landed on Autumn Town by Autumn Lane Stitchery. And this is stitched on a piece of 40 count hand dyed by me. There is negative space in this pattern, so you want a green, like a light green background is what the, um, what the model was stitched on. So I'm stitching this, like I said, on 40 count, one strand with the called for DMC, and there's two silks in there. We have, oh, excuse me, there is some over dyed floss from Weeks as well. And then here are the two Gloriana's. They're so beautiful and fun to stitch with. So we have Black Cherry and Apricot Grove is this one here. So I didn't do a massive amount of work, but I did start putting in the house. Um, and I believe this guy more, I added in more black and got some of this over here so a little bit more I think I worked on this on April 29th and I maybe did the tw I think I did the 29th and 30th on this piece and then mania started on the first so this got two days all right now we're gonna get into mania 2023 so my day one got to be a new start because I finished my loose feathers from last year from blackbird so this is the light upon the lawn which is loose feathers number two from blackbird designs this is stitched on a 32 count Murano it's over dyed by me. This is 32 count, and the last one was 32 count that I did, um, but that one was on a much looser weave, and this is a Murano even weave. So even though they're on the same count, they are gonna look pretty different. This one will probably be a little smaller than number one in the series, but I just did not wanna stitch on that kind of fabric again. So um, I'm able to get so much more work done when the fabric is not fiddly. And um, so this is stitched over, I'm just using one thread for a more primitive look, plus it's my preference because I have less knotting. I can just stitch along much more happier, easier with just the one thread, so I prefer that. So um, these are the called for flosses, which are the same flosses as the first um, pattern in the series. Sorry, my flosses are tangly. These are all just weeks, the ones that are called for in the design. And so this is how much I got done and everything from here on out is just going to be one day worth of stitching. And so if it's Mania Day 1, that means that I stitched it on May 1st. And I don't know if I said, but this is over dyed by me. This was just a piece of, I think it was very light purple and I wanted it to have like tanny khaki green coloration. So, um, yes, that's what I did. 
day two for Mania 2023 is a continuation of my day two from Mania 2022. So last time, as you can see, I had just these two signs. So I blocked out the outline for the next one, which says Sleepy Hollow. And then I added the lettering. And that means that whenever I pick this up next, I literally can just fill in this whole part, which makes this a very nice easy stitch once you have the lettering in. The pattern is kind of hard to read um, in these signs because you have full coverage and then you're trying to pick out the little symbols amongst all the full coverage of the sign. So it's actually kind of tricky um, like how you can't see these words very well. Imagine that but then like they're both the same color and it's quite hard to read it. Um, that's my only thing with this design. That's why I go through and do that very first and it makes it so much easier. It's just tricky for that first part. So we are making our way through this pattern. I have pulled this out a few times since Mania. So, um, you know, we're doing slowly but surely. I noticed that I have a few things to put like, I think there's something sitting right on top of this sign. And um, there's something else in there. Oh yeah, I forgot to do the back stitching on there. And since I stitch everything in hand, it's not a problem for me to add that. So I just didn't notice it the first time I stitched that sign. The floss that's gonna go in here is Pumpkin Pie from Gentle Arts, which is going to look like this. So beautiful. And here's all the called for um, over dyed and DMC. So I'm very excited. That black is actually not just DMC. However, I could have just used DMC 310 because I'm using a ton of that black. It's actually Witching Hour from Gentle Arts and it has a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of like red. So basically, I think this was over dyed with this very deep red first and then they put black over it. So you have a tiny bit of parts that you can see some red but it barely shows up. I see a stripe of it right there but I could have just, if you want to save yourself money, just use 310 on the black because you can't really even see that. That's just my little tip for you there. This was started, um, oh I didn't even tell you, this is Halloween This Way by Primitive Hair. Sorry, this is on the Dark Spell 30 count linen that she has specifically for this project. And I started this on May 2nd, as you know, 2022. Um, my notes say that I only stitched on this two more times, but I don't think that's accurate. But I pulled it out again in March and then in May, um, on May 2nd, again this year. And that's what I got done. And in case you're wondering what's on my nails, this is a Moonshine Manny polish. This is a limited edition polish called Run for the Roses from our Kentucky Derby Mix Along, which is a thing where we make polishes together on my nail polish channel in a live um, video if you ever want to come join in it's super super fun and you help make custom nail polish that happens um the fourth saturday of every month so this is on my website now for a limited time moonshinemanny.com if you want to go check it out the information is in the description bar below the next pattern i'm going to share with you is be you thankful from with i needle and thread this is my day three for mania 2022 and this was a new start this year because I had finished up what was on day three last year. So I don't have a comparison photo to share with you because this is the start of it and this is everything I got done on May 3rd this year. This is a piece of 36 count linen over dyed by me. This is one of the pieces that I over dyed in two videos ago. If you wanna see how I over dye my fabric, then you can go watch that video. It's not very technical, it's just how I do it. Um, but I like the method. It gets some nice modeling on there if you want to. If you want way less modeling, there's a, um, I show you one that has a lot less in that video as well. So this is stitched, like I said, on 36 count, one strand, as you can see, um, over two linen threads. And I'm using the called for um, DMC and over dyed flosses from Weeks and... Oh, it has everything. It has Gentle Arts, Classic, Colors, and Weeks. But I did change one floss. If you're thinking that that bird looks different, it is because the called for floss is actually Caper from Weeks. And I changed it to Peacoat. And when I was getting out Caper, it's like a, it's just another shade of green. There's a bunch of green in here. And the image didn't look like a green bird to me. So I wanted to pick something that was closer to the image from the model. So I grabbed Weeks Peacoat, and if you are interested in stitching a dark blue bird, 
I feel like it's a really great option. So that's the only change that I made. And yeah, I think that's everything about this one. Day four for Mania 2023 is the Fox from God Cottage Garden Samplings. I posted my update for this on my Instagram. If you're interested in following my Instagram stitchy page, it's Moonshine Stitchery, just like the name of this channel. Um, and that's in the description bar below too, if you would like. But I posted this on there because I'm doing an update each day for Mania. And I said how this is my biggest small in my whips. I can't seem to make very much progress on this. I don't know what it is. So this time I put in both of these trees and I started adding this dark brown here that outlines this side of the fox. And that's all I got done this time. So um, I just, I think I figured out that part of my problem with this pattern is my stitches don't lay nicely on this fabric. This is Coat of Doves from Atomic Ranch. It's an 18 count Ada and I'm stitching this with two strands of floss. I'm using the called for DMC and over dyed cottons and they're really long because I'm using the loop start on this because I'm using two strands but um they don't lay nice so I end up having to like fiddle with them and it's because this is a really tightly woven fabric I think after it was dyed and so the needle just doesn't want to pull the, fa the floss through here very well it doesn't want to lay nice this kind of fabric needed to be one strand of floss and I wasn't aware when I started it. I have more of it there um, for the rest of the winter patterns. And I will probably do over one or one strand because it's just been difficult to really get any kind of rhythm going with this fabric. So I started this on May 4th, 2022. It has come out one, two, three, four, five other times since then. And this is all I've gotten done <laughs> in six sessions of stitching on this project. It's just going so slow, but I really, really love it. So he's so cute and he's so, he's so regal looking. For day five of Mania 2023, I pulled back out Patchwork Printemps from Hardin Privé. This is on a 32 count linen light mocha. I started this on May 7th on Mania last year, but a couple of things have shifted forward because items were finished, I guess, or DNF'd. So if you're looking at this and thinking, I just saw this the other day and it doesn't look any different. That's because all I put in was this. That's all. Um, I just didn't have a lot of time to stitch on this day and I had just had this out very recently so I wasn't like pumped to put this in front of the other stuff that I needed to do that day so I really didn't do that much at all. I'm stitching this with the called 4 DMC with the exception of the two greens have a couple of over dyed flosses. So the lighter green on the model the person who stitched this used one kind of floss for all the green because it's a variegated floss. I chose two different colors because I didn't have one kind of green that went from this drastic of a change. So I'm using Bean Sprout from Classic Colorworks for the lighter green and Collards from Weeks for the darker green. So once I got the border done on this last time, it makes it so much easier to like see what I need to do, pick a new place to stitch on. So I'm enjoying this project a lot more. I just didn't have a lot of time that day to stitch on it. Yay, look guys, I got some progress on this. So in my Mania plans, I was showing you how this is one of the projects from last year's Mania that never got pulled out from the randomizer that I used to help me pick Mania projects. And I was so excited to get some work done, and I did. I got quite a bit yesterday. So this was my day six, and this is Friendship Garden from Heart and Hand. This is on Vintage Country Mocha Ada. This is an 18 count and I'm using two strands of floss on this, but it just makes such a difference that it's not, sh the holes haven't shrunken up in the over dyeing process. So it's so much easier to stitch on. I was stitching on this yesterday when I took my girls to a giant um, bouncy castle place. It's like, it's just this outdoor huge bouncy castle that just goes on forever. Um, so I'm using the conversion for the floss from the Craft Center Fine Stitchery in Salt Lake City. And so if it looks a little different to you, that's why. 
So, um, you saw my comparison, which just basically was the words and I think that little bit of fence. So everything else is new. I basically just wanted to stitch it exactly like how it looked on the model. So yes, I chose to go with their flosses and what else is there to say about this? I'm really, really enjoying it. It's so cute and it's small. So I feel like I won't need to pull this out very many more times before it is done. And I think that's it. So I'm filming today on May 7th, which is going to be summertime from Primrose Cottage Stitches. And then this video is going to go up on the 8th. So you won't see, even though it's going up on the 8th, you won't see the 7th stitching because that's today. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're confused about that. But this is where Mania is going to stop for this week. And then in two weeks time, I should have the rest of Mania probably. Oh, no, I will have just through the 20th. And then we'll have three more days of stitching on the following video after that. So anyway, lots of Mania stitching this month. It's so much fun. I'm absolutely loving it. All right, those were my whips. So now we're going to talk about haul. So I do have a little bit of haul. And so if you enjoy that, we're going to go ahead and get into it. I am a member of a number of floss clubs. And then I did pick up a few patterns as well. Found a new designer that I adore. So I'm going to share all that with you now. So I got three out of my four floss clubs in. This is the Roxy Floss Co. Overdyed Cottons first. And the shades are Sunshine, which is this um, kind of dustier warm yellow. And then there's another yellow. This is actually the Neutrals Club, but it's very colorful. So if you're wondering about that, the Neutrals, you get lots of colors. This is Chick, and this is just like a... A lighter washed out yellow and then we have this blue this is ruddy duck and then we have this then we have this deeper blue she's so blue and then we have grass queen which has some nice variegation of yellow in there and there's a little bit of a bluish green in there as well i've had roxy floss co for three months now i tried the neutral club like i said i really really love it i may be stopping my floss clubs for a little bit and i'll tell you why in a little minute in a minute in a minute the other cotton club that i'm in i get double that amount of um, floss. So this is from Forbidden Fiber Co., which I really love. She has super quirky colors in here. And then she has some that are just like straight, no variegation. So you have, you have like that expected color when you need it. So this is Jade. You get, I believe, 10 colors and then you get two that are made especially for that month, I think. So you get a bunch of colors from their line and then two new shades. So there's Jade, and then we have Big Apple. This one is Gravestone. It has some nice, barely, you can barely see it, but it's in there. Some browns. Virgo. So she does more um, variegation in color, so you would need it for like maybe something really particular but it's really really fun so she also dyes um wools for knitting and crochet and they look gorgeous so there's virgo mad titan see what i mean about how you would want that for a, a specific project maybe get a bunch of that and just do um single floss stitching here's another one that's really really different she has a lot of strong colors on this a cyborg. So there's hot pinks, purples, blues. And then we have some more standard colors here. This is full moon. It's a nice bright yellow. Then we have azure, a beautiful bright blue. Copper for when you want a copper penny color. Antique fuchsia, back to a little bit of variegation here. It's a grayed out fuchsia, basically. They probably did fuchsia and then they overdyed it with some gray. And then these are the two that were, I believe, dyed for this month's floss club. This is number 19 and I love it. It is some um, 
tealy grays with browns in there, like coppery browns. And then this one is Petunia. Oops, that little piece got caught. And as you can see, just some nice bright light violet colors. All right, so next is my Be Stitch Me Silk Club, which I probably won't pause because I wanna still build up my silks. Look at these bright colors. Wow, this looks fun. These would go perfectly for that Fragments of Time piece that I was talking about in my last video. So less variegation here, more just like straight coloration and very strong pigmentation. So we have Forget Me Not with a K-N-O-T. That's the medium blue. Then we have Solar, super strong, beautiful marigold yellow. The kind of um, brighter, slightly greenier blue, April Showers. This is Sunfire, really beautiful bright orange. And then Mission, a nice deep evening blue. And my goal is to get those flosses into projects that I am going to be starting soon. Okay, so here are some patterns that I picked up. This is the Stacy Stacy Nash Spring Basket Pin Keep. And I went ahead and just got the floss for it while I was at it. And I think I was ordering, I think I was getting MPIs or something. I just threw this in with it. These next things I got from Country Stitches with I Needle and Threads store, but she also, I discovered, carries a lot of other makers. So I actually went for this pattern. It is so cute. But while I was there, I discovered that I really, really, really love Artful Offerings. So I picked up a few of her patterns and I just love her design aesthetic. I love the symmetry. I love the colors. I love the simplicity. Just everything is very attractive to me. Here's the next one. I could easily throw in some lovely overdive flosses in here. This one, see what I mean? She always has this kind of mirror image with a little bit of words, simple colors, but not too primitive, which I find is my sweet spot. And then this pattern, I might start first. It's just so cute. And I would be so excited to have this out for Christmas time. Patriotic. And that's the last one. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. And the last bit of haul, I don't remember whose channel I was watching, but they had all through, I think they were stitching, I think they were stitching this one. So I picked up the three that go together. So this is from Needlework Press. Whoop. And this is Be a Friend. And this is the one that I got the floss for already. But they all use the same flosses. There might be like a few um, additions to one pattern or another, but they all use the main core. And then there's And Be Kind to One Another. This one is the vertical piece. And they are meant to, well, you can hang them together. And then this one is, in all things, be exceedingly diligent. And this one goes horizontally. I think this was the one that was designed first. And then while I was there, I figured I'd get this one because I see people stitching on this. And I feel like I should have that since we have the same name. And that's very uncommon for my name, so that's fun. So now after haul is when I usually talk about my plans. So we aren't going to draw any random projects this video because everything is kind of laid out for my mania stitching, which you'll find in the video right before this one. I went over all 23 days of what my mania is going to look like. The last six or so are kind of up, not up in the air, but they're they're reorganize reorganizable because I haven't decided like exactly what's going on each of those last days, but certainly for the next um, 
14 days of stitching, I am all set. So you can see what I'm going to be stitching in my, see my plans if you want to go watch the previous one, which goes over all of Mania. And if you don't know what Mania is, um, basically in about 2015, I think it was, there was a Facebook group where people decided they were going to stitch on a new project the first 15 days of May. I joined last year when I found Flossy because I didn't even ever know there was such a thing on YouTube before. Um, and I saw that people were doing it because I was watching videos from back from 2015. And so I decided to start it last year. So I started 22 new projects in May. And I only started my floss tube in April. So it was perfect for me because I was like, I need to f try all these designers. I need to try all these different fabrics, all this different stuff. So it gave me the opportunity to kind of start a bunch of stuff. However, then a year went by through my stitching and I learned that a number of those things that I tried weren't necessarily maybe my aesthetic or what I preferred stitching on. So a bunch of things I decided to DNF or do not finish um, or some things are in timeout. So it made some space for me to put some new stuff in there. And I also finished a few projects too. So that's what Stitch Mania is. I'm pretty sure I got some questions on it and I didn't answer them in the comment section. I apologize for that, but I hope that clears it up. And um, so yeah, that's my plans. My plans for the next two weeks is mania. So I'm really excited about it. And so when I'm back here in two weeks, cause I have a new floss tube for you every other Monday, um, you will see 14 more whips and I'm really excited. A few of them will be new starts. So the last thing that I'm going to share with you is the project that I've been working on that is not cross stitching, but is stitchy related and dye related. Um, my hands are a little bit dyed right now because I've just been um, going hog wild. <laughs> I think my dad used to say that a lot when I was a kid. So let's go ahead and take a look at my adventure. All right. I'm excited to share with you something I've been working on. And this is why my, um, in the nail polish community, we call our worker hand, our Cinderella hand. And so my um, right hand is often never painted because I use it for mixing polish and it always ha is always messy. And um, I'm always painting this hand for my website. And so the acetone I use to take off polish from this hand just would take off polish instantly from this hand. So in any case, my fingers are dyed because I only used this hand to stick in the dye. I've been dying floss, you guys. <laughs> Can you tell that I'm into it? <sighs> I'm super into it. So I've been having so much fun. So I've just been dying um, B52. I've been dying Ecru and DMC01 and just discovering different combinations. I have all my formulas so I can start putting this into projects and um, if I need another skein of that particular floss, then I have it. So I have been having so much fun and I am trying to decide whether I want to make a space for you to pick up any colors that I might talk about that I'm using in my videos or in my projects. Um, make a space for you to snag those if, in case you're wanting them for a project. Um, so I don't know. I'm thinking about it in case you are wondering as I show you these shades, but this is so fun. So if you want to give this a try, I'm just using basically the same method that I use when I'm dyeing fabric. So if you want to go watch two videos back, I talk about that. So you can go very variegated. Um, you can go slightly variegated. All of these have usually two, at least two colors in them. This one is pretty cool. They're all cool. I love them. They're all my babies. This is an example of a floss that I didn't use any um, double colors with, but I have a method of twisting so that you get some variegation. This one I love. So these only have numbers right now. They don't have names, but I think they will have names in the near future. This guy. So anyway, this is really fun. If you have watched my floss tubes and thought about how fun it would be to dye your own fabric, it is 
probably more fun to dye floss because with fabric, at least for me, I'm not usually trying to dye a piece of fabric that's this color, but I do want floss that's, that's this color. So I already know because of my nail polish business how much I love playing with color and formula and mixing different things. And so for me, this was a really um, fun interest to find because it's similar to nail polish making. Of course, with nail polish, I get to add shimmers and I can add glitters and hollow and flakies and all that kind of stuff, but this is similar. So it's really, really fun, you guys. I just have them on on um, playing cards. You guys see, I always have my floss like that. So I made a lot of neutrals and then I made a lot of brights and I just went to town. So this is why I was saying that I will probably pause my cotton floss subscriptions because I, it's really nice if you are trying to make a specific look with called for flosses and if that is really satisfying to you to use the exact flosses that the, the designer called for to make that exact look, I totally get that. But I am in a place where I like switching things out and seeing what kind of combinations I can make. So that sort of thing doesn't stress me out and I am looking forward to putting all of these into work on my projects. This is a fun set right here. They go really awesome together. In fact, these would look really cool in the Lila Studio Summer Quaker. So anyway, um, yes, if you're interested in trying your hand, just get yourself some skeins of those colors of DMC I listed before and get your dye. And it's in two videos back if you wanna go watch that. Here's some more some more kind of muted springy tones. So anyway, we spent a long time on this, but I was really excited to share with you because I had so, so, so much fun doing this. And if you enjoy dyeing your own fabric, I bet you would enjoy dyeing your own floss. So there we go. That is that. All right, so that is pretty much everything that I have to share with you today. I really appreciate you stopping by, spending some time with me. And if you enjoyed what I've been stitching on, definitely hit that subscribe button, give the video a like, and another really great way to support my channel is to comment below the video. So thank you for being here. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I hope the rest of your week is sunny, peaceful, and filled with love. So happy stitching for the next two weeks. I will see you back then and take care. Bye.